He's been a mentor for me and for hundreds of other young black lawyers. He built community through his work. He was a father, he was a husband, he was a loving person. He was a true black activist. The very first association of black lawyers. He was Carabana's first chair. He was so many things to so many people. A mentor, an advocate, and a friend. But to many of us, he was just Charlie. My conscience said to me, you got to stand up in the spirit of Martin Luther King. You got to stand up in the spirit of Sister Rosa Parks. You can't bow down. You got to emancipate yourself from mental slavery. I was a high school student in the mid-70s. We used to watch the news and see Charles at the forefront of championing our causes, standing up for our community, at a time when there were not very many black lawyers. I met him during the time when there was a lot of things that was happening in Toronto. There had been a number of police killings of black people within the city of Toronto. I was part of a group that Charlie founded called Community Against Racism. And racist deportation. And racist deportation. The issues at the time were issues of police shootings and police use of force. Or there were labor issues happening as well. The deportation of women of color. She's really being deported because she's black. And I am a good mother. And as you can see from my three children, I'm a single parent. And I'm a hard working woman and a hard fighter. And I'll fight on and I won't leave my kids behind. They're throwing out uh, immigrants who are permanent residents here now. Charles said, OK, we have to appeal it. And that was what we did. Whenever there's a problem or there's a channel, Charlie would say, okay, let's go sit down and then we can discuss it. If it's gonna be a march, then he would say, okay, we'll contact these people and then we'll go and have a march. He's chanting and says, okay, let this person stay or down with deportation or down with racism or down with oppression. Olivia, Olivia, what did you do? The rise of NATO fall down on you. Charlie Roach was more than just a lawyer who wore the suits and was at his desk and arguing big cases, but actually was grounded in community, who led protests, was on the blowhorn, but also could navigate within the court spaces and also engaging with media in very strategic uh, and effective ways. Carrying crows circle the ground. Shrapnel flesh cover the ground. I fight injustice. So yes, I am obsessed because I think morning, noon, and night, when I have my breakfast, when I have my dinner, I keep thinking all the time, what can I do to bring about equal dignity of all persons? The blood is yours, the oil Uncle Sam's, but an oil stain desert sand, the blood is yours, the oil uncle sand. It's not about what a person have, but it's about the person themselves. It's who they are. And when you find you have someone in that caliber that is there for you as a person, Charlie gives me all of that. Because I know Charles Watch was one of those ones who wasn't afraid to go out in the street and march in the street for justice for all. Resistors, warriors, people who are not prepared to take what is handed out to us, but who want to stand up and express ourselves for freedom and justice. 
Black Action Defense Committee was established in 1988, where you have Charles Roach coming together with Dudley Laws, Sharona Hall, and Lennox Farrell. And they had a very powerful message to bring, and they were effective in their community organizing. And they created space for the organization I currently work for, the African Canadian Legal Clinic, to do the work that it does on systemic anti-black racism. Black, 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 black. Currently, when we're looking at uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, the ways in which that movement is fueled by young people uh, doing a lot of strategic mobilization and advocacy on the ground in much the same ways that we saw Badsy doing. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! And so we see the continued fruit of uh, Badsy's legacy and, and Charlie Roach's legacy in, in the space that he created. He has a lot of challenge too because they were fighting against him to, to shut him up, but he refused to shut up. He refused to give up. We have all benefited and we're all better because of the work that he did. It's a legacy that we have to carry on. Can we climb the same tree and still be free? I free from you and you free from me. I free from you and you free from me. Can we be living mates are stuck in a crate and never lose options to choose? Can we be living made stuck in a crate and never lose options to choose? Can we sing the same song and still get along, or sing a different tune, a different key and melody, all that and yet still be a duet? Mm. Since we both agree on equal liberty, if that's the case, why wouldn't things fall into place?